An exciting day for the Morning Mix. We are joined by a Grammy-nominated artist that lives right here in Boston. American countertenor Reggie Mobley. Thanks so much for being with us here on the Morning Thank Mix. Thank you. So you were just nominated this year for Best Classical Solo Album for your album because this isn't your first nomination, but what was it like to hear your name called again? Um, it was pretty cool because I never actually heard my name. I was, I think I was playing a video game and I just saw a string of texts on my phone. And I just looked down and they said, congratulations. And I kept testing back for what? <laughs> uh, and it turns out- Because you won the video game? <laughs> yeah, you did yeah. a really good job. I won, yeah, I'm great at Zelda. Uh, <laughs> but no, it, it turns out that they had, I'd been nominated again uh, for this category for best cl uh, classical solo album. And I was as shocked as anyone. So the first thing I did was text my mom and ask her if she knew. She was like, I was texting you right now. I was like, oh, <laughs> What did your mom think? Oh, she was excited. She's she was always like, excited. Of course, I of knew course. you were She's gonna, like, yeah. Please win a statue that I can have. Oh. <laughs> It'll go in her house. <laughs> right. Why do you think your album has resonated with so many people? It's a, that's a really good question. I would say, well, take centuries old music uh, created and sung by my ancestors by African slaves, and as well as music of black American composers. Um, and then take that and it's interpreted and programmed and recorded by a black queer 18th century German music specialist and a white French jazz pianist. Mm -hmm. And then treat all that music in the same way you would treat Gershwin or Porter or Kern as though they're jazz standards. I mean, it fits, it's in the classical category and I would, put it there, but the problem is, well not even the problem, but the boon of it all is that it doesn't really fit in any real category, and because of that, it really kind of fits everywhere. That's so cool. You have this amazing, unique voice that we're hearing right now. When did you realize you had something special like this? Oh, and my professor told me. Oh, really? <laughs> not, not like when you were a kid at six years old? Absolutely shows in the house or, not. No? Uh, I sang in a barbershop quartet at the University of Florida, and my professor heard me singing the top line. He dragged me up three flights of stairs, this asthmatic kid, um, to his office where he made me sing in this higher range and he looked at me, stared at me and said, do you know that you're you, what you are? You're a countertenor. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. What's a countertenor? Right. Um, <laughs> but he told me that's what I'd be doing for the rest of my life. That's so cool. You've done so many things, performed all over the world. What would you say has been the greatest moment of your career so far? Other than this moment, right? <laughs> Other than being here. Yes, yeah. Well, you just took that away from me. So thanks, y'all. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I would say, well, I mean, okay, I've done incredible things like you know just last summer I you know was able to sing at the coronation uh, for King Charles which is a once in a lifetime wow. thing. Um, but you know I don't want to say that any moment is, is the greatest because that means I've peaked so I think I have yet to find that greatest moment but I would say uh, singing in a musical theater performance in front of my grandmother in a massive 18th century ball gown is probably a is definitely a benchmark. The greatest so far. How about <laughs> so the greatest, far, greatest so, far? so far? Awesome. That's up there. I like that. We read that you like to research and perform the work of forgotten black composers. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's not just forgotten black composers, but also composers of various diverse backgrounds. That includes forgotten female composers. That includes forgotten queer composers. And recognizing and bringing the idea today that composers and musicians who existed in the 16th, 17th, 18th century, all of music, classical music, was just as diverse then as the world is now. And to show that, that this is not a, a, an art form where everyone else is an outsider, but it's something that we've always had a part of and been a part of. And so at this point, I've done a, particularly a lot of research in, in, in reference to uh, black composers and composers of African descent. Uh, Ignacio Sancho, be the first, um, he was a freed slave, uh, born on a slave ship, and he was, it, because he was a shopkeeper after he earned his freedom, he became the first black person to vote in parliamentary elections. Wow. I mean, these are the incredible stories that exist in, in, our, in our vast music history, and I want to find more stories like that. And what about, what do you say to a young kid like yourself who might be sitting at home in Boston, see you, see, that doesn't look like what I would expect um, a countertenor to look like. What do you say? <laughs> to them as far as following their dreams? Uh, don't listen to anyone else. Be curious. Just keep going. Uh, put down the PS5 controller. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> go fall down a YouTube rabbit hole and keep finding more classical artists and more music that looks and sounds like you and whatever you're interested in. It doesn't necessarily have to be what I do, but as long as you follow your passion, if, especially if it's music, just 
just do it. That's wonderful. Reggie Mobley, thank you so much for being here. Good luck at the Grammys. We'll be rooting you on. <laughs> and coming up, Reggie is going to show off his stunning voice next. Well, now in the morning mix, Grammy-nominated countertenor Reggie Mobley. He's performing the song, Oh Solitude, a song composed in the 17th century. Thank you. 